Have you ever seen anything like this? It's called halo gravity traction, and it's how we train the spine to stand tall before life-changing surgery. Hey guys, it's Scoliosis Awareness Month, and I want to tell you the story of one of the strongest eight-year-olds I've ever met. She was diagnosed with something called juvenile idiopathic scoliosis, and she had a spine curvature of 108 degrees. 108 degrees, that's more than a 90 degree angle. Now the diagnosis of scoliosis can be held by many different age groups, from the newborn all the way to the elderly. And of course that means there's different kinds and different causes. I've spoken on adult scoliosis and adolescent scoliosis in the past, and today I wanna to focus on juvenile idiopathic scoliosis. It's diagnosed between the ages of four and 10 years old, and we call it idiopathic because we do not know what causes it. It's not from carrying heavy backpacks, slouching, or even gymnastics. It just happens, and in some kids, like the patient I presented yesterday, it can progress rapidly. She was initially diagnosed on an Adams forward bending test. That's a test that they did in her school to screen for scoliosis. Many of you may remember going into the gym and having this done when you were a kid. What you're looking for is when they lean forward any type of asymmetry in the trunk, like you can clearly see this shoulder being significantly higher than the other side. Now it's just a screening test, so there are other tests that we do to help confirm the diagnosis. Here's what you should know, that there are over 3 million new cases of scoliosis that are diagnosed per year. And early detection is so crucial for the best outcomes for these patients. So if you've ever noticed someone with a shoulder hump, an uneven waist, or they're leaning to one side, it's best just to get it checked. Here's an example of what exactly I'm talking about. Typically, there's no underlying neuromuscular, congenital, or syndromic cause. The curve pattern is usually to the right, like in our patient, and also like many cases of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. And the critical part is it can be progressive. When kids hit their growth spurt, the curvature can progress rapidly. It's four times more common in females than males. The earlier in the age of onset means the more time it has to progress. It could lead to severe deformities and even pulmonary compromise if it progresses rapidly. So close monitoring is crucial. I mentioned in the case yesterday that she initially was treated with bracing, but her curvature progressed rapidly to 108 degrees and she began to notice shortness of breath even in gym class. That's because when the spinal curvature becomes so severe, it can affect the rib cage and can reduce the volume of the thoracic cavity and that limits the ability of the lungs to expand and if left treated over time it can actually cause restrictive lung disease and in severe curves it can even affect the heart clinical signs of pulmonary compromise are shortness of breath with exertion fatigue frequent respiratory infections and decreased exercise tolerance and we measure the curvature by something called the Cobb angle yes kids even neurosurgeons need geometry we take the most tilted vertebrae at the top and bottom of the curve and draw intersecting lines and calculate the angle. And this one was 108 degrees. We will also order MRIs of the spine, particularly in younger patients, to help rule out an underlying spinal cord anomaly that may be contributing to the scoliosis, such as tethered cord syndrome. We'll also look for a spinal cord syrinx because that means it would not be idiopathic, but rather a neurological cause for the scoliosis. Now, if it's a left-sided curve, it's particularly important to rule it out because in most cases of idiopathic, it's a right-sided curve. It's over 90% of them. Why would that be? We actually really don't know the answer to that. There are some neurological theories that it may be more of a right-sided bias from asymmetries in the brain or the spinal cord control of posture because some studies have found subtle differences in those patients with AIS. Subtle difference in proprioception, vestibular function, and nervous system development in those patients with adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. It's very interesting. So after we diagnose it, how do we know if the patient needs surgery or not? Usually curves under 25 degrees, we just watch. 25 to 45 degrees are often recommended bracing, and any curves above 45 degrees or with a rapid progression, we often consider surgical intervention. In a patient with severe curves or rigid curves, we'll consider halo gravity traction prior to surgery. So what does halo gravity traction actually accomplish? It's a non-surgical treatment that's often done prior to surgery to help straighten the patient's curvature before headed into surgery. 
So that metal halo ring is attached to the patient's skull with pins. The skull pins are then attached to a pulley system in which weight is added to gradually take pressure off of the spine. The patient can be sitting, walking, or even dancing. Gradually stretches the spine over days to weeks to help reduce the curvature. And that reduction of the curvature can actually expand the chest cavity and help them breathe. And that can reduce complications during surgery. Can often make surgery safer and more effective. That's typically done for two to four weeks before surgery. And don't worry, the patients aren't at home. They are admitted to the hospital and are under medical supervision during the entire time of the traction. Well, tell me about the surgery. I've got a video for you. First, the patient is lying on their stomach and we prep and drape the skin, make an incision overlying the curvature of the spine. Over each bone in the spine, we'll make a pilot hole and carve out a place for the pedicle screw to go inside. After making that pilot hole, we'll then sound the pedicle to make sure it's in good position. We can then place a device to help measure the size of the screw we need. We'll tap the screw and then place the pedicle screw into position. This is then repeated in each bone of the curvature that needs to be fixed. And here you can see where each screw is placed into the entire deformity of the spine. We'll measure the rods, place the rods into position, and then use those rods to bend them to help straighten the spine just like this. This is making it look very simple, but these are long and physically demanding cases for the surgeon. Once the curve is straight, we'll lock it into position, final tighten all the hardware, and here are the jaw dropping pictures of what we can accomplish with a surgery just like this. This is a big surgery, but children are resilient creatures. They're usually up and walking within just a few days and notice an immediate difference in their back. And I am telling you, from young children to older adults, scoliosis surgery is one of the most rewarding things that I do as a surgeon because we make such a tremendous difference in their quality of life. Remember, awareness leads to earlier diagnosis and earlier diagnosis leads to better quality of life. And in some cases, if diagnosed early enough, can save them from an operation like this. Now you might say, well, this kid's whole spine is fused. They're not gonna have a quality of life. Actually, yes, they do. They can run, jump, play, and, re and to return to most daily activities and even sports once they're healed. Depending on how much of the spine is fused, they may have some limitations in their flexibility of their back. But otherwise, they're just normal kids. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case. Don't forget, if you know someone that's had scoliosis, we have created these unique scoliosis design shirts to help honor those amazing warriors. See you later guys and have a great rest of your week.